Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today um, to hear about the Interdisciplinary Design Strategy Program at the Institute Without Boundaries School of Design, George Brown College. My name is Nazneen Homayn Fair. I'm the program coordinator um, and a faculty of the Interdisciplinary Design Strategy Program. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Institute Without Boundaries. Um, uh, so what it is all about, um, a little bit about the interdisciplinary design strategy postgraduate program, um, and uh, some of the projects that we work on, some of the methodologies that you're going to be learning, as well as um, some uh, requirements for admissions into the program. So I'm going to start right away. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat or in the Q&A, and I'll make sure to get to all of them at the end. So I'm going to start all off by telling you a little bit about what the Institute Without Boundaries is. Um, and really at the Institute, we believe that the problems of the future are not going to be respecting our tidy professional disciplines. Um, this saying kind of underlines everything that we do at the IWB um, and uh, all of the projects that we choose for our interdisciplinary design strategy program. Um, so we believe that it's uh, really important to bring together people from different disciplines and backgrounds, um, from different um, expertise um, to work together um, on solving a real world challenge um, through design and strategy. So we are an internationally recognized design think and do tank based out of the George Brown College. We're based out of the School of Design. And our vision is really rooted in this idea of collaborative design practice for a better world. And we do this by fostering collaboration between different disciplines to create innovative local solutions to 21st century global challenges. So everything that we do is rooted in trying to understand some of the challenge that, challenges that we are going to be facing as a society. Um, and around the world and to come up with the uh, solutions or strategies to solve them. So I'll talk to you a little bit about kind of some of our values and beliefs um, and really everything that we do, all the projects that we um, undertake, start with this idea of exploration, um, using a hands-on uh, think and make approach um, to come up with projects that we call wow projects. So at the end of the year, all of our students work together um, to come up with really original projects that are innovative and that have that wow factor to them so that they can be out in the public and people will kind of understand what, what the project is all about and how it can be used as a solution for our global challenges. We do this by creating teams with integrity. Um, we urge them to have the courage to create meaningful change, um, to always be present in the big issues that it's happening around the world, and to share their knowledge and finding with the public, with stakeholders, and with the users that, um, that are at the center um, of our design problems. So we have different design approaches at the Institute Without Boundaries. And these are the things that you're gonna be experiencing if you take the Interdisciplinary Design Strategy Program. You're gonna be really learning about multidisciplinary, uh, multidisciplinary and participatory design. All of our students or faculty uh, are coming from uh, different disciplines and backgrounds. So we have students coming from philosophy, political science, all the way to uh, graphic design, architecture, marketing communications, and urban design. So it's a very mixed cohort of students Students that we have. And throughout the year, we work with stakeholders, um, with faculty, staff, uh, users, um, and uh, really a wide variety of community members to uh, take on a participatory design approach. So really co-create solutions with people rather than coming up with solutions for people without kind of taking their decisions um, to heart. Um, we use design thinking and research, so really understanding what a design process is, how do you conduct design research, what's the difference between design research and kind of, let's say, secondary and primary research, and how can you use insights um, to come up with human-centered design solutions. So really taking this idea of having a human-centered approach, understanding who are the humans that we are designing for, um, and kind of coming up with solutions with that idea in mind. Um, we have systems thinking. Uh, so systems thinking is really trying to understand what are the different systems at play and how can we make sure that our solutions are in designs um, address those systems. And we use strategic foresight innovation. So kind of understanding future trend, trends to kind of solve for them now um, uh, from the beginning. Um, and then all culminates in design action. So coming up with solutions that are actually tangible and that we can pilot them and prototype them in the real world. 
So we've been pushing the boundaries of design for over 18 years. Um, we started in 2003 uh, with Bruce Mao with a project called Massive Change, which was looking at the role of design in answering some of our biggest global challenges. From there on, we looked at World House, which was really understanding how can we create a sustainable um, housing system. And then we looked at city systems, which was all about what are the different systems existing in cities and how can we design solutions for them. Um, then we looked at regional ecologies, which was all about, you know, kind of looking at what a region is. So let's say the Toronto region and how can we solve some of the problems that agree uh, that exist between the boundaries of regions. So, for example, inequality, poverty, lack of municipal cooperation and trying to come up with strategies and solutions for those. And then from 2018 until now, we're looking at future ways of living, which is really all about understanding um, how are we going to be living in the future and how can we design solutions and anticipate some of the problems that we're going to be having rather than waiting for something to happen um, and then designing for it once it happens. So the interdisciplinary design strategy program um, is the academic division of the Institute Without Boundaries, um, and it really is a one year postgraduate certificate offered through GPC School of Design. And the ideas program really remains relevant by adapting to new projects and evolving in alignment with the design industry. So the program consists of core courses and complementary modules um, that really embed this real world project um, and partners into the curriculum. All the projects that we choose are aligned with something that's happening around the world, um, so a global or a local issue. Um, and we partner um, with uh, industry um, to make sure that the students have that partner and client interaction as well. So the program spans across two semesters. Uh, you will have, uh, the program will start at the end of August and typically goes until the end of May. Um, and you will get a one year uh, postgraduate degree for it. Um, we have a number of core courses and some complementary modules that will teach you some uh, tangible design skills. Um, but the really the core of the program is all about collaboration and using design research and strategy to come up with design solutions. Um, so you're going to be doing the core collaboration with your peers in the major project preparation and major project development courses. Um, that's where you're going to be given a design brief with a specific set of problems, and you're going to be working with your colleagues to try to understand the problem, define it, and come up with strategies and solutions for it. And that spans across the entire year. Um, um, and you're going to be taught by faculty who are working in the industry at, uh, currently. So the faculty are going to all be working in the design industry. Um, in semester one, you have three modules. Um, they're only three to six weeks each, and they teach you communication design, product system service design, and environment design. So really all about all the different tangible uh, design skills that you need to come up with your projects. You will also learn about design research, history, and theory. So all of the different uh, methodologies that you need to be able to conduct design research. You will learn about a design process. So what is a design process um, and how can you create your own? And you will have three charrettes throughout the year. And a charrette is basically a word for really intense design workshops where you will be working with with um, students and faculty from around the world um, to come up with design solutions in a very short amount of time. So during each of these threads, you'll uh, collaborate with each other, but you'll also be facilitating interdisciplinary teams of students from our partner organizations in Milan, in the US, in Ireland, uh, Copenhagen, um, and France. So you'll get a chance to really practice your leadership and facilitation skills to come up with design solutions. In semester two, major project development continues. You will have major project uh, communication, which is gonna be all about how you communicate your research and strategies to the public. So it includes publication design and uh, website design or an exhibition design. And then you also have professional practice design strategies, which teaches you all about how you can create a portfolio. You'll hear, by, uh, you'll hear from our alumni and from our industry partners on what skills you need to be able to get a job afterwards. Um, and you'll also have the Integrated Design Process 2 course, which is all about project management, budget management, um, and how you can kind of make your projects all tangible. And as I mentioned, you will also have two charrettes in semester two.
So this is kind of the structure of the program if you want to look at it in the academic year. Um, as you can see, major projects is through that entire uh, semester, and then you have the complementary modules and the charrettes. So when you have a charrette, um, it's all every, uh, no other course is taking place that week because it's a really intense um, week for you to really come up with um, tangible design solutions. This is our semester two. Um, and this is kind of the schedule uh, for the two kind of uh, semesters. So as you can see, you'll have your courses and then you have days dedicated to studio time. Um, so those days are really for you to understand what it means to work in a studio, work with each other on, co on completing the assignments and um, getting ready for the classes. So future ways of living, I kind of told you a little bit about what a future ways of living research team is, um, but I'll go deeper into what it means. So since 2018, we've been looking at uh, this idea of future ways of living, which looks at future trends and some of the problems that we might experience in the future, um, let's say two, three years from now or 10 years from now sometimes, and kind of trying to come up with design solutions and strategies to address those challenges. Um, so it's really about taking an anticipatory approach to design rather than a reactive one. Um, so each year within this thematic, we've looked at a specific topic. Um, so to, in 2018, we looked at affordability. So it was all about the global affordability crisis and our students came up with a publication called Perspectives on Affordability and a series of projects that um, kind of uh, showed their strategy in action. Um, in 2019, 2020, we looked at ethical smart cities. Um, so this is a snapshot of an exhibition that our students did as part of Design Teal and actually won an award uh, from Design Teal um, called Jurors Award for Community Wellbeing. Um, so it's an award-winning exhibition that our students did. And it was really looking at uh, what does it mean to create an ethical smart city and how can we make sure that we're using technology um, to help address problems rather than for technology's sake. And in 2020, 2021, we've been looking at living and aging in place, uh, especially with COVID. Um, how can we make sure that our older adults have the product services, systems and environments they need to be able to successfully live and, uh, live and age in place in their neighborhoods and in their communities. Next year, so 2021, 2022, we're going to be looking at uh, climate change and migration. So uh, the migration that happens as a result of climate change um, and how can cities prepare to respond to some of these challenges. So that's the topic that we're going to be exploring in 2021. Um, it's a really timely topic uh, because of climate change. A lot of people are getting displaced. So how can we make sure that we have the proper resources ready for them and um, that they uh, cities are also prepared to accept influx of people um, that are coming to them as a result of climate change. So how are you going to be looking at this topic? You're going to be doing design research and systems thinking, so really understanding the cause of the problem and coming up with visualizations and information design to address them. Um, like I mentioned, so using information and communication design to define and communicate your insights, um, use strategic foresight to create a timeline of events, um, how we got here and what's gonna happen in the future if we don't uh, kind of try to answer some of these problems and what are some trends and cover patterns. Um, you're going to come up with an integrated design strategy, so you're going to use all the insights that you've developed to come up with a strategy um, and use that strategy to come up with design action. So creating and prototyping products, services, systems, and, envi uh, and environments um, that are really inspiring creative solutions. And then at the end, you're going to be communicating everything in an exhibition slash event design. Um, so really creating an exhibition uh, to showcase what, um, what it means um, and, and to showcase your research insights. So what are you going to get out of the program? Uh, we have different pathways beyond graduation, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of them uh, right now. Um, the first thing that you're going to really get out of the program, it's really you're going to learn theory and practice. So you're going to get a chance to, uh, to do research, design research particularly, and then practice it. So uh, really this experiential design that you're going to be coming up with solutions and practicing all of the theory that you learn. You learn about design process, you learn about uh, interdisciplinary collaboration with your peers and with your faculty. 
you're going to get a chance to work with industry partners and stakeholders. Um, you're going to get a chance to collaborate with your faculty. So your faculty really become your mentors. They'll guide you through the process and they're going to get in the trenches with you throughout the year to, um, to do all of these projects. And you're going to co-create solutions. So you're going to co-create with uh, community members, co-create with your faculty, and you're really going to get, get your hands dirty to come up with these solutions. Um, you learn all about human-centered design, how to conduct design research, you get a chance to ideate, iterate, prototype, test, and then start again. And then at the end of it, you'll get a chance to communicate all of these um, to, to the world, basically. Uh, a lot of the things that we do is very public. Um, last year in one of our virtual events, we had around 300 people who logged in to view the students' work. Um, and they logged in from all over the world and from Toronto to really learn about uh, what our students did um, about ethical smart cities and, and kind of, uh, it became a really great outlet for our students to promote their work. In terms of pathways and partnerships, you have different ways to go after the program, depending on your previous discipline. Um, the first thing that you can do is we have an affiliation with the Institute of Art, Design and Technology in Dunleary, Ireland. Um, so after you finish our program, you can apply for, for the Masters of Arts in Design for Change. It's an extra four months. Um, you get a chance to do an individual thesis. And then in addition to the postgrad degree, you will also get a master's degree from IDT. Um, so it's a great pathway for you to, um, to get a master's degree um, after graduating from our program. And this program is really uh, individual. You get a, get a chance to work on your thesis and then you'll have to defend it in front of, uh, in front of faculty. These are some of the places that our grads end up working at. So we have our grads end up working at agencies, design studios, um, public and private corporations, um, nonprofits. Um, so really depending on your previous background and discipline, you get a chance to, um, to kind of focus on your area of specialization. So you can focus on project management, entrepreneurship, you can become a project coordinator, you can do UX, UI, user research, service design, communication design, really the, it's the, the fields that you can go into is really big. And we're gonna help you throughout the professional practice course and throughout the year to kind of narrow down and create a portfolio to get the job that you're looking for. In terms of the application process, it's pretty straightforward. First, you'll have to apply through OCAS or the international portal um, and submit your transcripts. Once your application is processed through our admissions, um, I'll send you a questionnaire to fill out. Um, so the questionnaire is gonna ask you to submit a link to your resume, digital portfolio, two letters of references, um, and it'll ask you a couple of questions about your skills and your future goals. And then I'll schedule an interview with you. Once I do the interview with you, along with another of my colleagues, um, we'll, get about, uh, we'll get back to you with our decision. We only accept a uh, maximum 15 students each year. Um, so I really urge you to apply for the program as soon as possible if you are interested. Um, we accept applications on a rolling basis. Um, so, uh, so if you do, you, if you get your application in as quickly as possible, we'll also schedule the interview and, and the process will go much quicker for you. Um, it is a very competitive program to get into. So these are some of the backgrounds of our students. We have students from interior design, uh, architecture, accessories design, also social sciences and humanities. We have students who are more mature, who are looking for a career shift. So um, they come from different, they might have like 20 years of work, working experience and they kind of want to pivot into design. And so they take our program to, um, to learn more about this methodologies that we're teaching. And these are samples of portfolio. So really you can, uh, you can give us your case studies. Um, you can give us anything that you've done, even if it's volunteer or extracurricular. Um, it, can, it could be visual, it can be photography, it can be product, um, UX, UI, um, case studies, writing samples, visualizations, but really trying to, um, in the pieces of work that you show us, it's really important for you to highlight um, the skills that you have and how it's going to be relevant to our program. So maximum 10 pieces, you can submit a website, you can submit a PDF portfolio, Behance, video. Um, it's really up to you and, and how you want to showcase your skills to us.